Moyo, who is Zimbabwe's former Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education. He joins us now on the line. A very, very good evening to you, Professor Moyo. Thank you very much for speaking to us. My pleasure. Your sentiments on the death of former President Robert Mugabe? Well, uh, given his age uh, and um, the recent developments, uh, it is something that uh, most Zimbabweans uh, uh, saw uh, coming. Uh, but the fact that it has happened um, is obviously a, a challenging experience uh, from uh, various point, points of view because this is the one national leader that um, uh, served for the younger ones, the tod toddlers. Uh, all generations uh, know him as the founding leader. And when you lose, or any country loses uh, uh, its founding leader, uh, it, it is uh, a, a national question. Founding leader whom, I'm not sure if you're privy to my conversation with human rights lawyer Mobezi Tamlilo uh, just a few uh, moments ago where he said, Ultimately, his liberation struggle uh, credentials remain intact, but the leader he became later on, not so much, describing him as an autocrat who murdered his people. Your response to that? Well, I think that um, uh, founding leaders, especially in divided countries uh, and um, uh, those that uh, have gone through uh, an armed liberation struggle such as Zimbabwe uh, invariably uh, will not escape uh, being blighted by dark spots, dark moments in, 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 in their history uh, or leadership. And this is more so in situations uh, where these leaders uh, uh, remain in office or rule for uh, extended periods, as happened in Mugabe's case, 37 years is a very long period. Um, but you know, uh, for the sake of perspective, you look at the case of uh, founding leaders in a, a country that many or some at least see as democratic, the United States, George Washington, uh, Tem uh, Thomas uh, Jefferson, uh, are highly regarded uh, uh, Jefferson, you in the media uh, see him uh, a, as a, a leading light. Uh, he's the one who is known for his saying that it's better to have newspapers without government than have government without newspapers. But these men were slave owners. They were slave uh, traders. Uh, yet quite some respectable African Americans who were victims of that uh, slave trade uh, uh, acknowledge their founding roles. Uh, so, Professor Moyo, am I to understand you to say the perspective you would have on Pre President Robert Mugabe depends on the prism through which you view him? Well, uh, from the point of view of understanding any issue, definitely the prism you use is a significant factor. But that's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is that um, uh, President Mugabe is a founding leader, uh, or at least his legacy, much more the legacy uh, than the person, uh, is, is, is bound to be blighted by dark spots. And therefore, Mugabe, or, or uh, at least the assessment of Mugabe, will not escape that because this is a, a, a reality partly influenced by the uh, serious but divisive questions of the day, but also influenced by the approach that the, the leader uh, uh, takes. In the end, we have to do a balance of considerations in order to better appreciate uh, the legacy of a founding leader. Mugabe was not a system unto himself. He was a product of uh, a system in his particular case, a system that believed, as it still does, that the gun dictates politics. This is the system that brought him into the uh, leadership of the liberation movement in 1975, confirmed him in 1977, 
and campaigned for him in 1980, kept him in power for 37 years, reposed him in mm. power for 37 years, and deposed him uh, in uh, November 2017. He, he, he was deposed then. He's now left this world. But that system is there. I think that uh, okay. uh, it will take... Uh, Professor Moyo, allow me to ask you this question there. Some of his critics said that he had uh, no idea of how to run a modern economy, that he never brooked any criticism, that he focused too much on how to share out the national uh, cake, as it were, as opposed to grow it. What is your response to some of those criticisms? Well, uh, the critics uh, who say that uh, he, had, he had no uh, idea how to run a modern economy uh, would be aware that the conventional assessment of Zimbabwe, uh, which some of, some of us disagree with, is that it was a jewel for the, for the first 10 years of independence. Zimbabwe is presented in conventional wisdom as a success case. His reconciliation policy in 1980 is presented as a success and uh, Zimbabwe generally as a, a bread basket uh, for the region uh, and uh, uh, the continent. That is the conventional wisdom. And then the wheels fell off uh, according to conventional wisdom when um, he uh, embarked on land reform. So the, 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 the summary you just gave is, is not in fact the one you will find uh, broadly shared. But what is, uh, for me, some of the issues that should uh, uh, come to this uh, analysis or assessment of Mugabe's legacy now as we look back is how he dealt with some of the most difficult issues. And for me, one of them is, of course, the Gugrawundi question. And I think that something has to be acknowledged by the fact, I mean, uh, about the fact that uh, in the end, uh, Mugabe uh, engaged uh, Joshua Nkomo, or the two in, engaged each other. These were the principal leaders of our liberation movement. They went to Lancaster as the patriotic front together, it was unfortunate that they did not contest the 1980 elections as the Patriotic Front. And, of course, uh, the, the Gukurawundi uh, atrocities followed. But they did find each other in 1987. There is a unity accord that uh, they forged together. And in Como, who was a victim of Gukurawundi uh, and who led the Zapu, which was a victim of Gukurawundi, and who came from Matebele land, provinces that were a victim of Gugrawundi found it within him to enter into that unit accord in 1987 after Gugrawundi right. and served with Mugabe until uh, 1999 when he died. That should uh, uh, say something about uh, how founding leaders engage each other in moments of uh, Tragedy, Unfortunately, we, we have run out of time, but thank you so much for you, uh, speaking to us. Professor Jonathan Moyer, Zimbabwe's former Minister of Higher Education.